morning church genesis chapter 39 starting in verse 1 and joseph was <laughs> was brought down to egypt and potiphar an officer of pharaoh captain of the guard an egyptian bought him off the hands of the ishmaelites which had brought him down thither and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he had, all that he did prosper in his hand. And Joseph found great grace in his sight and served him and made him an overseer of overseer his house and all that he had put into his hand. And I'm going to stop there for now. The Lord was with him. Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord. Father, I ask you another to preach. I want your church to hear, Father, what, to, what does say to the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We all know the story of Joseph. He was sold by his brothers into Egypt. Because he had dreamed dreams and his brothers did not like it. So they came up with this plan. Instead of killing him, they would sell him into Egypt as a slave. And they threw. He was working in the palace, and Potiphar's wife went into him and tried to get him to lay with her. And he was thrown into the prison. And in the prison, he met two people, the butler and the baker. And they dreamed these dreams and Joseph gave them the meaning of these dreams. And once, some three and a half years later, would remember Joseph when Pharaoh had his dream about the coming famine. He would remember Joseph and he would say, you know, I was in prison. With a man that interpreted our dreams. And they came to pass exactly as he said they would. So Pharaoh goes down to the prison and gets, jo gets Joseph. And brings him into the palace. And he gives him the, 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 what he dreamed. And Joseph interprets these dreams. And Pharaoh says, you know, I need somebody to, to oversee this, this, this planning and this harvest. So he would implement Joseph to be the overseer of Egypt. What his brothers meant for evil, God meant for good. Because, see, Joseph, because of Joseph's relationship with the Lord, he would have enough grain and enough everything else that when this, when this drought hit Egypt, really the world at that time, his brothers would go to Egypt to buy grain. And he would approve them getting grain. And eventually, Joseph, Jacob would move his entire family from the land of Canaan into Egypt. Trial and tribulation does not mean God is left. 
Joseph had been thrown into a pit, sold to the to the Ishmaelites, and taken into Egypt. But we never once hear Joseph complain. Not once. He's then thrown into a prison because he was falsely accused. You still don't hear him complain. You still don't hear him, Lord, why am I here? What are you doing? See, Joseph had a faith in the Lord that even though he didn't know what was going on, he chose to trust in the God he served. Little did anybody know outside of the Lord that famine was coming. That, 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 that this famine and this drought would last for some seven years. So what did he do? He he allowed Joseph to become the second in command to Pharaoh and orchestrate the greatest harvest of the world of that day. They stored all this grain in bins and in houses, in storehouses, in preparation for this drought and famine. All to eventually get Jacob to Joseph. See, they would dwell in the land the Israelites would dwell in the land of Egypt some 210 years in relative peace until there arose a Pharaoh that did not remember the works of Joseph. Joseph rested in the Lord. The Bible says over and over that even though he was he was dealing with being thrown into the pit and dealing with being thrown into the prison, that the Bible says over and over and over again that the Lord was with Joseph. Her adversity. That does not mean God has left you. See, we've been taught in the Pentecostal world the last 50 years that you, that if you're going through something, your faith is not strong enough. What do they do with Joseph? What do they do with Job? who the Bible says was of an upright man and of a perfect faith. And yet these people that are promoting this, if you have enough faith, you'll never deal with anything, say that Job lacked faith. When this book says the exact opposite. Joseph would be a type of Jesus in that he would save Israel from starving to death. See, they would go, Jacob would send his sons into Egypt to buy grain. And Joseph, when they came, he would be dressed in his royal 
Egyptian dress. So they did not recognize him. And he started asking questions. Is your father well? How is the family? How is your brothers? I can imagine their confusion. And then when they bought the grain, the money that they had spent to buy the grain was in the sack of Benjamin. And so they would they would get confused and then they would he would end up calling them back and saying you stole from Egypt. And he would keep Benjamin. He kept <laughs> He kept Benjamin because he knew if he kept Benjamin Jacob would come. Israel would come. You go and you study Jacob during this time. And you see his name alternating between Jacob and Israel. Jacob being his original name. Israel being when he was operating in faith. He would go and seek the Lord. Lord, what do you want me to do? Joseph would send chariots. They would have to go back. His brothers would have to go back to Egypt, to, to, to Canaan. And they would have to tell Jacob what they had done some 25, 30 years before. They would have to tell Jacob, your son Joseph is yet alive. And Jacob didn't believe it. And they said, Father, just go look outside. And he goes and looks outside and he sees Egyptian chariots. And servants waiting on them and loaded everything they owned into these chariots. And jo Jacob says, it is enough now. J Joseph is alive and I will go to him. See, for the last 20 years, he thought he was dead. But now his faith has been renewed. I'll go to him. And he goes to Egypt. And he sees Joseph. And he sees Pharaoh. And Pharaoh asks him, How old are you? I can just imagine the the the, the conversation of Pharaoh and Jacob. And then he turns. And he sees Joseph. And he weeps and he says, The son that I thought was dead lived. I can now die in peace. But yet he would live in Egypt for some what was it, 20, 10, 15 years? And he would die, Jacob would die in Egypt. And this is how much faith the Pharaoh had in Joseph. He told Pharaoh, he said, my father is dead. Let us go back to Canaan and bury him in our homeland. And Pharaoh says, go on. You saved us. Go on. All because the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. There can be no other greater 
thing said of anybody on this planet than the world than the Lord is with you. He could have murmured, he could have complained. He could have said, Lord, why what what what's the purpose of me being in the prison? What's the purpose of me being in the pit? But see, I want I want y'all to to notice this too. The very thing that got him sold into Egypt in the first place was his brothers dreaming these dreams. Or Joseph dreaming these dreams about his brothers, I should say. What freed Joseph from the prison? It was the dreams about the baker and the butler. How did Joseph get to be second in command to Pharaoh himself? He told Pharaoh what his dreams meant. He can take a negative when we can't see anything but a prison cell. We've been thrown into a pit. We've been sold to the to the Egyptians. We've been lied on by Potiphar's wife and thrown into a prison for a crime he didn't commit. It would have been easy for him to complain. But yet the Bible says through it all that the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord is with us despite the adversity, despite whatever you're going through. The Lord is with you. He will never leave nor forsake one of his children. You can be in a prison cell. You can be whatever the case. But as long as you hold to your faith, he's not going to leave you. The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. The apostle Paul was locked in a prison, had shipwrecks, had all of this stuff. And yet by modern Christianity teaching, they would say, well, he was cursed by God because he had to go through this and this and this and this and this. David, the man after God's own heart, would lose a baby And he would lay on his face while this baby was sick and he would pray and intercede. And then when the servant came and said, the baby has died. David gets up, washes his face and he says, he will not come back to me, but I will go where he is. Adversity gives faith the opportunity to work. Think it not strange when you have adverse circumstances. Think it not strange, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when I allow you to be thrown in the fiery furnace. Because I'm going to show up in the midst of that fiery furnace. Think it not strange, children of Israel, when you're on the backside of the desert, 
and you can't see any way out. I'll split the sea wide open. Think it not strange, Joshua, when you come into Jericho and it's walled. I'll push down those walls. Think it not strange when you come against and have adversity. It's nothing new. But what I'm trying to get y'all to see is even in the adversity, the Lord is with you. He will not leave. Don't do it. He would raise up Joseph from the pit to the prison to the palace. But had Joseph murmured and complained, it probably would have taken longer to do the will of God. See, the Lord does not forsake his children. The Lord does not forsake his children. We may turn our backs on him. He does not forsake his children. I don't care what adversity you may be going through. You may be feeling like Joseph and being in a prison cell over something you didn't do. See, Joseph was innocent. And yet Potiphar's wife lied and said, he tried to come into me to cover up her own lust. But see, once again, this was all in the Lord's plan. Because had it had she not done that, he wouldn't have been sentenced to prison. Had he not been sentenced to prison, he would have never met the butler and the baker and interpreted their dreams. And three years later, them stand before Pharaoh and Pharaoh say these dreams that his soothsayers and his witch doctors and all this stuff couldn't dissect and couldn't understand, couldn't interpret. So what is this, what was it, the baker say, there's a man that I was in prison with. There's a man that I was in prison with that told us what would happen. Go talk to him. Two years later. Two years after they had told Joseph they had been delivered and put back into the into their rightful offices, and Pharaoh and Joseph says, Remember me. Tell Pharaoh it was me that interpreted your dreams, and they didn't, they forgot, or so they thought. God's timing. Is just as important as his will. See, had had they reminded or told Pharaoh that, that this man was in prison and he had interpreted these dreams, Pharaoh would have just shook it off because it wasn't necessary. The Lord had to wait until it was an opportune time for Pharaoh 
and when none of his soothsayers could explain the dreams, then he brought Joseph's back, Joseph back to mind. And they would bring him out of the prison. And he would tell Pharaoh, okay, Pharaoh, the, first, the second dream is of a great harvest. You need to appoint somebody to oversee this harvest. So Pharaoh <clears throat> thinks a little bit and he's like, hmm, you. And he was instantly taken from the from the prison to the second most powerful man in the world of that day. Because he trusted the God he served. Church, you can trust him with everything. It's not easy to trust him when we've got, you know, adversity all around us. We've got, you know, divorce and death and sickness and the list goes on and on and on. But the fact is we can trust him through that. He's not going to leave. He's not afraid of our issues. He's not afraid of, well, JB's done this, 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 and this. I can't do this anymore. He's not afraid of whatever we're dealing with. And he's, the faith is the key that unlocks the door. Time and time again, we see in this story, the Bible says over and over and over again, but God was with Joseph. He was with him in the prison. He was with him in the palace. He was with him in the pit. Think it not strange when you have fiery trials, Second Peter would say. Because those fiery trials that come to destroy our faith also have the opportunity to build our faith and draw us closer to our Father. If we don't quit. If we don't quit. And throw in the towel and say, Lord, I can't do this anymore. If anybody had the. The right, I guess, would be the right word to say there to quit. It would have been Job. What did he say in chapter 14 of his book? Though you slay me yet, I'll trust you. Lord, I don't understand what you're doing. I don't understand what this is about. But I will trust you. See, it's hard to trust when you've got family members that are sick. When you've got relationships that 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 you've been praying for and you can't see the end result. It's hard to trust when you've got friendships that you were so close at one time and you've been praying and seeking God and you don't know the end result. It's hard to trust. But church, let me tell you something. 
you can trust him with everything. You can trust him with your broken heart. Luke 4 says he is near. He will heal the broken heart. We have a choice. Trust or not. Trust his plan and his design, even though at times, like the psalmist said, Lord, I can't see but a few steps in front of us. But your word is a lamp unto my feet. That lamp gave off just enough light to take two or three steps. It didn't give us the whole picture. It didn't give us the whole... See, had, 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 had Joseph seen the whole picture, I wonder how different the story would have been. Had Job seen the whole picture, and not have to walk through. See, when we walk through adversity, he's trying to get us to trust him. He's molding us into the image of his son. The Bible says that when we come against fiery trial, it will purify us and we will come forth as gold. You may be in the valley. You may be on the backside of the desert. You may be looking like Ezekiel did, and all you see is dry, dead bones. Your God can make those bones live. We, we have to remember who we serve, church. This is the God that shook Prison cells and prison cells opened and Paul and Silas walked out. This is the guy that reached down when Peter walked on water and caught him before he sank. This is the guy that Jeremiah says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. This is the guy that was with Joseph in the pit. Was with Joseph in the prison. You may be through the waters. Through the floods. Yet will I trust him. See, trials have two purposes. One designed by God and one designed by Satan. The one by God is to strengthen our faith and to teach us how weak we are and how strong he is. One by Satan that is trying to kill, steal, and destroy. He wouldn't be a good devil if he wasn't trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I believe it's in John 10, the enemy comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your faith. He wants to destroy your faith. He wants to ultimately kill your faith.
God, on the other hand, wants to walk with you through it and strengthen your faith. We don't learn anything oftentimes when we're on the mountain. When we're on the mountain and we're walking with the Lord, everything's good. But he takes us down into the valley. And in the valley, we learn him. See, on the mountaintop, we look at ourselves like, Lord, you delivered me and now I'm going to praise you. Because we're on the mountaintop. Can we praise him now that we're in the valley? Because the same God that's with you on the mountaintop is with you in the valley. Your circumstances do not change whether or not God is with you. He is walking with you even though you may be in adverse waters. Even though you may be in the furnace of affliction. Even though you may be on the backside of the desert. Even though you may be like Daniel and in the lion's den with the hungry lion. God is with you. And he will never leave nor forsake. As long as we keep the faith. The Lord was with, jo was with Joseph. The Lord is with us. Despite whatever we are going through, the Lord is with us. When the angel introduced Christ, what did he say? He said, Emmanuel, God with us. He now lives on the inside of us. And will abide there until we die or the trump sounds, whichever comes first. So church, I'm telling you, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care. Satan is beating us over the head. You've got lost loved ones. You've got this. You've got this. You've got this. God is with you. He will never leave and he will never forsake. As long as we keep the faith, we can trust him intimately. Lord, I need loved ones saved. Lord, I need deliverance for whatever the case. Lord, I need the baptism with the Holy Ghost. Lord, I need whatever the case. He is able and willing. It's like the woman with, with the son that, that, that was demon-possessed, and she would say to Jesus, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Lord, there's a part of me that believes you, but there's also a part of me that don't. Church, we can trust him. We can trust him with every little aspect of our lives. Because he is a good, good father. He desires a deep 
intimate relationship with every single one of his children. And guess what? We can have it because the cross paid for it. How bad do we want it? And look, I'm not saying that that once we come in contact and start having an intimate relationship that we won't have adversity. Joseph teaches the exact opposite. Joseph was in a relationship with the Lord. The Bible says the Lord was with him over and over and over again, and yet he still had to go through. You can trust him. Even though you may be in a pit. You can trust him even though you may be in a prison. Falsely accused. You can trust him because whatever, wherever he has you. He's not going to leave you there. He is not going to leave you in the same state that you're currently in. His desire is to change us. Will we allow him to do so and not grow bitter? See, Joseph could have gotten bitter. Lord, I've been sold into Egypt. I've been sold by my family. I've been sold into Egypt and I'm going to be bitter and I'm going to pout. Instead, he didn't do that. I can imagine he was singing praises to the Lord. And Pharaoh knew that there was something special and different about this kid. And yes, I do. I did say kid. The biblical evidence is when he was sold into Egypt, he was 17 years old. He was a teenager. But yet Pharaoh knew that there was something about him. The Lord was with him. So when he interpreted this dream, Pharaoh thought, well, if the Lord gave him the dream, there's nobody else I would rather have in command than the one walking with the Lord. See, you can feel like you're in a prison cell. Promotion is coming as long as you don't quit. Do not stop. Because you can't see what the Lord is doing in this moment. Do not throw over your faith because you've got a promise from God saying, I'm going to save that one. I'm going to do a work in that one. But Lord, it's been 10 years. It's been 15 years. It's been 20 years. If he's prop, if he has promised you something, I don't care how off the wall it may seem. It is yours by faith. And it will come to pass. Ecclesiastes 3 says there is a time for everything. And just when we stop praying, it would be the very time God wants to open that door and give us everything we've been seeking him for. It's like a man with the three loaves that knocked on the friend's door. Lord, lend me three loaves. No, my children are with me in bed. He wouldn't take no for an answer. Are we good praising him in the hallway until he opens the door? Father, I come before you in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, give us a persistence to hang on and to trust 
that you are God and you cannot fail. Whatever promise you have given us, it is ours by faith. And just like Joseph, we may have to go through the pit. We may have to go through the prison. But you are with us, even in the prison. Teach us that you're with us. Let us know that you are with us. And that we can trust you to lead us out. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. I will see y'all Wednesday night.